All right. Welcome to today's uh, special stream. I'm going to be here with uh, Dylan Scatina. He is an actor, uh, an independent actor. You can introduce yourself. Well, I am very independent. I do everything by myself. I feed myself. I can tie my own shoes. Um, oh, it's really just those two things that I do by myself. But yes. Uh, uh, my name is Dylan. Uh, I am an actor. And uh, Flint, thank you for, for having me on tonight. I oh, absolutely. It. Uh, my, uh, little sis, well, technically she's little, she's technically my age, but it doesn't matter. Uh, she has a little crush on you, so. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh. Is she blushing? Oh, absolutely. Fantastic. She always blushes. I mean, you could technically argue that I blush too. I I'm not blushing. That's just part of the, uh, allure of me. Yeah, no, it's that, uh, it's that aesthetic right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so the first question um, is, well, why uh, choose acting? Why did you become an actor? Uh, so I guess. All right. So I'm going to use very cliche terms. Um, I was bit by the bug while I was in eighth grade. Uh, my first like actual performance performance was uh, I was Lieutenant Brannigan. Uh, in the show Guys and Dolls, and Lieutenant Brannigan is basically... He's, there was a bad guy in this musical. It would be Lieutenant Brannigan, because he is the police officer. He's a detective that's in charge of finding Nathan Detroit's floating crap game. And <laughs> wouldn't you know it, Lieutenant Brannigan is half a step behind uh, Frank Sinatra pretty much the entire... The entire show, the entire movie, the entire musical. Uh, but yeah, I did that in eighth grade, and uh, I took ninth grade off. I didn't do any any acting when I first got into high school. Um, I actually played baseball and ran track and was in ROTC. So like, I my life was moving in a completely different direction. And oh. then in the tenth grade, I auditioned for the talent show, and uh, I got in uh, doing comedic magic. Um, and the head of the theater department at the time, uh, Mr. Devers, uh, said, I need you in my class, uh, next semester. <laughs> and I said, all right, I, I, sign me up, I guess. Let's, let's do this. And yeah, I've been from, yeah, 10th grade on. It, it was all acting pretty much all the time. Oh, wow. Um, so obviously there's, there's, I've worked with you and a lot of people have, uh, I, I've worked with, you knew. Were some of those people in high school? No, uh, I actually didn't get didn't get hooked up with the crew until uh, I met a fellow actor, Craig, uh, in college. And, <gasps> oh, okay. And yeah, and then we got we got hooked up, uh, you know, busting monsters, and, <laughs> and 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 now that. Now that was history. Yeah, you know, started starting working with uh with with all you guys consistently year after year after that. So oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's really cool. There's some stuff I actually don't even know surprisingly. Uh, and I know Dylan forever. Uh, we go on like I feel like a decade. It's probably been somewhere around there. It's been. It has easily been a decade. Yeah. Uh, because I was hanging out with. Craig and Tori, yeah, back in 2009. So ostensibly, I met you yeah. over a decade ago. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's wild. It is. It's crazy to think about. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't even think about that until I, uh, well, obviously I thought about it. And we're going to go more into that side, you know, like the the, the film stuff uh, of what you've done uh, a little bit later in questions. Um, but, uh, well, you actually answered the second question or third question. How did you get into acting? Which was, you know, uh, what you just said. Um, was there... So, like, when you went into college, like, did you think you were going to do a different path or did you just know you were going to do acting? All right. So, yeah, let me hit you with this little tidbit as well. When I got into college, I didn't do any acting. Um, uh, did I, Did acting all throughout high school? I was like, all right, let me, now it's career time. Let me figure out what I want to do. And I actually started off my college career 
in early childhood education, I wanted to be like a, a fourth or fifth grade teacher. Oh, that's so awesome. That like, Man, you would have been awesome like that. So so that was that was that goal. And then I uh uh I ran into um Sean Haley who uh, would you know become one of my one of my best friends uh, still to this day we did a show up in uh uh up in a, a small town uh just north of, of of Kennesaw State and we met and and we did that uh it was high school musical uh, actually uh Sean and I had the two roles in the show that did not have to sing or dance at all and <laughs> we loved that um we we did that, and then right. I randomly ran into Sean at the gym at Kennesaw State the next year, and was like, "Hey, I'm I you know I'm pursuing acting. I'm doing this. You know, we're doing. I think they were doing Moby Dick at the time. Ooh, that'd be hard. And I was like, "Oh, cool. Let me let me check that out." And then I got kind of reinvigorated into acting and theater again, and did the. Uh, improv society up at Kennesaw State and you know was doing improv shows and sketch comedy and stand up comedy like as much as I possibly could all through all throughout college after you know, after getting reinvolved with it so yeah my sophomore year of both high school and college was like all right it's time to act again <laughs> it's it's the the urge and the itch that I just couldn't resist that's awesome we love you for that <laughs> Uh, who inspired you? And this could be actually a, a general question. It could be, you know, something that has to do with like your life, or it could be acting related, or it could be other things related, you know. Um so my grandfather on my mom's side was a clown and a radio personality and was was all about the entertainment. So I always kind of gravitated towards that, you know, like my, my grandfather is 95 years old, 96 That's awesome. years old right now, and really hasn't skipped a beat. Still, <laughs> you know, oh God, for his 90th birthday party, he was still giving a speech and he played the guitar and he was, <sighs> he, yeah, like he was, he was still all about it. That's um, so awesome. So personally him on on like a oh this is this is in my blood i can i can actually do this and here is a path before me that i could follow if i wanted but like on a like why do i want to do this and this is going to sound really really weird <laughs> follow me on this yeah um do you know the show boy meets world yes okay. So Will Friedle is the actor on Boy Meets World who plays Corey's older brother Eric. Okay. Excuse me. I remember watching the series finale of that show, and I been in high school, middle school or high school when uh, when it you know finally aired its final episode. Yeah. And I remember watching Will Friedle and just remembering how much. He made me laugh as Eric for, you know, the past seven years or however long the show yeah. ran. And I realized he was not going to be able to do that anymore because the show is ending. So mm -hmm. his character was done. He, he was done being Eric. It just something clicked in my mind. And I said, I can do that. <laughs> I think I think I would like to do this. I would like to pick up where where he left off. So I think more than any other performer or actor, if I had to put my credit to why I'm doing what I'm doing, it it would be to Will Friedle for sure. Oh, that's that's fantastic. I I love when something that you're passionate about that you're doing is inspired by whether it's a, an actor or a performance, which I think the performance is even more important, you know? That's, that's really cool. It's like, it, it, the, the actor is like the medium from everything mm -hmm. that happened behind screen, behind the stage, 
don't see, and then that brief moment after it on film, this is this is what the the actor has given you. This is what the director has decided to go with. This is what the yes. editors have around. Right. And it's, I, I, I don't know. It was just. It's such a like a brilliant orchestrated mess, <laughs> and, then at the, and then at the end of the day, you've got this performance made people laugh, or this made people cry, or this makes people think, and the great actors can can kind of do it all. So that's awesome. I love that. That's a great answer. All right, so we're gonna get into uh, well your project. So. Uh, tell us about some of the projects you have done throughout your career. Uh, so I'll start with the with the most fun ones, obviously. Um, <laughs> Monster Buster projects. Um, did I say that? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, but but working working with with all you guys, like, like I said, pretty much year after year after year. Um, for, yeah, for for almost a decade was excellent. Yeah, so awesome. And you know, I was never really a a fan of the horror genre before I started <laughs> working and hanging out with you guys. But 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 now I love it. And now it's it's the cat's pajamas. Yeah, yeah. We we pretty much become a family on set. You know, the uh, Monster Buster was basically uh, made by Tori Haas. Uh, if people don't know this, uh, it's an indie uh, film company um, that he just wanted to make very quirky, fun, good uh, horror, you know, films. Uh, but I feel like a lot of that relies on the cast and crew, you know, like the, the, the love in it is amazing, honestly. Yep. Uh, it is it, it it is very much like getting to work with with your best friends mm -hmm. and your your cool cousins every day being on set. Um, yeah, there is that that very strong sense of a family. And plus, we we just get to do awesome and amazing things. <laughs> yeah, we do. Um, and, you know, like it's it's not every day I get to just be ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that is very I true. To do that. And it was it was pretty awesome. I also so, remember we we're, were talking about Invasion of the Undead, also known or, or remade. Uh, the, the title was remade into uh, the Neon Dead, but uh, Dylan plays one of the lead characters, and uh, and it's kind of a it's like the uh, what would they call um, uh, Evil Dead series? Is that campy? Am I am I right on that word? Yeah, it is. It is very campy. Yeah, so that, absolutely. You know, this is not big budget. We're not spending making a million dollar film, but what we what we do when we made it was made it a great film for especially the budget. And I remember reading some of the stuff. I'm like, how the heck is Tori gonna do this? And he does it. Like he figures out a way. And it's freaking fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Like. Oh man. Yeah. Uh. Between, uh, I just remember being on the set and being blown away with you, Tori, and Nick, and um, uh, Caitlin and Jay, and just being in awe of how awesome you guys were handling everything from setting up shots to cameras to making it just to making it work mm -hmm. because again like you said we were up at four o'clock in the morning and we were still shooting night shots and <laughs> we were racing the sun and half of us had food poisoning oh god I, I just remember being completely miserable and insufferably happy at the same time <laughs> and and it was wonderful and i know that that would not happen had everybody who was there mm -hmm. somebody different or had not been there in the first place yeah so <laughs> well bringing up that moment what are some of uh, i have a, a question for best moments on set and hardest moments on set 
that's probably one of the hardest moments I, you know, I don't know if there's another hard moment and then you can talk about best moments too. Uh, yeah, I, I look really tough, um, but I'm not that tough. So when it gets really cold out, <laughs> um, I, I, I'd rather not be outside, even though <laughs> we're, we're shooting for six hours oh, um, yeah. outside. Uh, I mean, honestly, if you're doing, if you're playing around, that's that is what acting is. You're you're playing around. It's really hard to have a bad time. <laughs> um. So yeah, like me being temporarily uncomfortable on set because it's cold is probably the worst thing that I've ever had to deal with. Um. Then. And yeah, the best times being on set is lunch. Lunch every time that we get lunch or dinner. <laughs> oh yes, yes. On set, it really is. Yeah, uh, no, just being afforded the opportunity to to hang out with awesome people, awesome creative people. Mm -hmm. Let me rephrase that. Um, is it is the best part of, of 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 acting and the best part of being part of a production. That's awesome. Um. All right. So, uh, this is going to be we're going to transition into the quick questions. I call this. I'm going to sh shout out twenty different questions. You just name off, you know, or you answer it as best as you can, as fast as you can, off the top of your head. Even sometimes because some of these are going to be bizarre questions. It's going to start out simple. And it's going to get really weird <laughs> fantastic so okay favorite color purple favorite food uh nachos <laughs> favorite candy uh gummy bears <laughs> favorite oh, man, these are easy these are too easy exactly favorite music Ooh, uh pop punk oh favorite pop game punk. uh Ooh. Ooh. Oh no. Oh no. This one is way too tricky. Um okay. Uh I'm going to go with Sept and it is wonderful. Awesome. Uh favorite movie. Oh man. Uh Happy Gilmore. <laughs> favorite show. Arrested Development. Comedy. Favorite actor. Or actress, you know. Man, my favorite at uh, Michael Keaton. Ooh, nice. Favorite historical figure. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> oh. oh, favorite historical <laughs> figure. I just uh, uh, I don't know. Well, I like tall people, so let's go with Abraham Lincoln. Hell yeah. Uh, chicken or beef? Oh, what was that? Beef. Beef. Okay, sorry. Mountain or ocean? Mountain. Mountain. Okay. Samurai or ninja? Ooh. <laughs> uh, I, I, I got to give it up for the nobility of the of the samurai. Hell yeah! Donuts or ice cream? Ice cream. Dinosaurs or aliens? Oh, and I'm a air. Uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait. Let me let me blow your mind real quick. I'm going to wager and say that dinosaurs were aliens. Oh. In the day. Oh. That's but good... I, I would go with aliens. <laughs> What's the final answer? <laughs> Boobs or butts? Oh. <laughs> oh man. Probably butts. That's nice. Why is the sky blue? Oh, oh. <laughs> no, as above, so below. Maybe maybe they were like, hey, you know what? These these oceans are blue. What are we going to do with all this up here? I, I don't know. We have a lot of leftover blue. Just, just, just put it up. It'll be fine. Why is candy so good? 
I think the little sugar get gremlins <laughs> have something to do with it because they're just they are unrelenting. <laughs> Why are people human? Oh man, Flint! I almost spit out my Coke Zero. <laughs> All over literally everything. Um, I wait. Why are people humans? Yeah, well, I'm a fox variant, so this is a good question for me. Oh, uh, uh, man, we we are humans because at some point in time, or somebody made the greatest decision of their life, or somebody made the worst mistake of their lives, and now we are all paying for it. Or being rewarded for it <laughs> all right well, why are we so tiny but so big we have a lot of love to give and some of us don't know how to place that love with other people <laughs> um so we are we are oxymoronic in our mere existence <laughs> that is exactly how we should be hell yeah and the last question why are you amazing uh, I'd like to say it's because of my dashingly good looks. I know that it. I know that it's just because I am a reliable and dependable friend. Aw, that is awesome, and that is very true. Aww. Uh, all right, back to the questionnaire again. The regular questionnaire, not speed questions. I like the. I, I like the speed questions. I know, I love those, them too. Those were good. <laughs> Uh, is there someone you kind of hit on this, uh, but you can answer it in a different way too. Is there someone you look up to? Uh, yeah, I, um, uh, I, I was like super fortunate, um, uh, growing up that, uh, I had two really awesome parents. Um, uh, and even though they separated, um, my my mom and my dad were like, oh. awesome people. They always supported me in everything that I wanted to do, whether it was baseball or Boy Scouts or magic or acting. Or they were there for me. So that's awesome. And they created an amazing person. So mm -hmm. to them. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Next question. Uh. If you could work with any actor, who would it be? Um, uh, I have always, mm, I've, well, so Michael Keaton was one of my favorite actors. I think, mm -hmm. I still think it would be awesome, awesome, awesome to work with, with him. But my, my short list of actors that I would love to work with mm -hmm. is, uh, Idris Elba, for sure, because I think he's so versatile and can do anything. Um, also, like to work with Sean William Scott, um, just because I think he is absolutely hilarious, and mm -hmm. he, he gets typecast as kind of like the goofy dropout kind of ass. <laughs> I, I, I bet he could do so much more if, uh, if, if, if given the proper script and, 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 and the support. And right. And I, I, I would love to work with, um, uh, Kate Blanchett or Anne Hathaway because I think they are absolutely awesome as well. Right. Right. No. Awesome. Awesome. All right. If you were to teach someone on to be an actor, what would you say? What would it be? Uh, I. I think the first lesson would be learn how to listen. Mm -hmm. Because the impressive parts, and I'm finger quoting impressive, the impressive parts of acting is genuinely reacting mm -hmm. to what your scene partner or what the scene is giving you. So it's less on a character and doing the voice and getting the walk and finding the wardrobe and it's more <laughs> genuinely listening to your scene partner and being vulnerable with your response and how you communicate back with them 
Oh, that's that's awesome. I actually have called out <laughs> Dylan saying that he's a fantastic listener. I, you know, like when I first was on set with Dylan, you know, when we were doing the Neon Dead, he, uh, I didn't know who he was, you know, and, you know, so, and obviously when you're behind the camera, you could like just really pay attention to the actors. Uh, and I just noticed that about, uh, about Dylan, about you, you know, is, is how you listen. Uh, so it's fantastic that you bring that up, you know, uh, I think that's so important. Maybe even, you know, I feel like some people are like, like you said, you know, they like want to like perform, you know, they, they don't realize how important it is to actually take in the information from the actor. That's why chemistry is really important in, in acting. <laughs> and, and it's, it, it, it is something that is very easy to overlook. Mm-hmm. But yeah, just being present in the scene and listening and doing it openly and honestly and earnestly is mm-hmm. the foundation, is the crux of what 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 makes acting good or what makes acting not good. Right, right, right. Um. So I guess let's talk about uh, uh about Tori and you know his work like. Obviously, you worked on the Neon Dead. Uh, you worked with Jay on um, on uh, Dead by Midnight. He, he Dylan was part of uh, Jay Short. Uh, what the heck was it? Called? Laundry room? Wait, what the heck? Lost laundry. Thank you. Yes, I, I knew I got that wrong. Um, and these are also little things that I think Dylan is amazing at. Is he didn't really do that much in that 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 short. But the things he did, he did flawlessly. Like, he had a knock on a door. I mean, come on, knocking on a door is not that hard. But knocking on a door style is hard. <laughs> and Dylan's knock made me die. I was like, well, how? How is he even thinking of this idea? <laughs> it's brilliant. I, you know, you, you just have to have fun. And, and mm-hmm. especially with... with the Dead by Midnight shorts that we were able to do, what, it was nothing but fun. Like, if you were not having fun while you were on set, you were doing something wrong. <laughs> That's true. So, you know, I, I come in and I, yeah, I'm in in the piece for a minute, like a minute and a half, two minutes tops. I'm not there for a long time, but I was going to make sure I was there for a good time. Yes, so, and he definitely was. You know, I felt like the set... Like, like a weight was lifted in a way when you arrived on set, uh, and I know the actors loved you. You know, um, uh, Melissa and who was the other actor? And and JB. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> She's supposed to be knocked out, and you're freaking making her die laughing. <laughs> yeah, I. Like I said. Oh man. Just do it. Do it honestly. Do it earnestly. Exactly. Yep. All right. So uh, these questions are not exactly film related, but uh, what do you like in life? Um. Let's see, I as I've gotten older, and twenty years ago, I would not have thought this way. Twenty years ago, I definitely would not have thought this way. You know, the fifteen-year-old Dylan. But, but, you know, we're, we're all dumb at 15. <laughs> I, you know, I, I I was dumb up until last week. So um, what I like most in life now is, and this might sound cliche, but I like the freedom that, that I have, actually. Yeah. Like, it's true, I, I, I work a lot, and <laughs> all of the work might not be or exciting or glamorous or helpful on a spiritual soul cleansing kind of level Mm -hmm. to humanity or the planet or what have you I pretty much have a lot of time to do the things that I want to do which is which is nice so of of all the things that are good in in life, I I kind of appreciate 
freedom that I have and the uh, the solitude that comes with being independent and being free. Oh, I like that. That's awesome. And, That's true. You <laughs> know, like, and I thought I was going to be like married with kids at like me too. <laughs> that is not how it is now. And I was thinking back, like that would have been so wild. It would have been. <laughs> He's at babies at at twenty two. No, we don't need that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you have to, yeah, you know, kids bring in responsibilities and a change of almost like how your life direction would go. You know, so yes, very true. <laughs> All right. Uh, what silly thing makes you happy? Oh. Uh, I am still very much a sucker for, like, cute, tiny animals in news feeds, like on Instagram or on Facebook. <laughs> I, I, I will watch, like, a kitten. I'm in and out of, like, a construction hat. I will watch that loop for, for now. Four, five, six times. <laughs> and I'll find another cute little animal doing something equally silly. That is... Like, th th those simple silly things. Like, if the internet was just... Like, baby animal memes, I, I think humanity would be a lot better for it. I think... <laughs> What we have done with the internet is so it's so wrong. Oh, that's very true. I'm at I'm on here. After. Um like pretty box though, so that's like that's what's up. <laughs> Alright. Uh so the next question uh has to do with well uh, a project you you did. Uh what were your thoughts on Heroes of Time? Uh, Heroes of Time was freaking awesome, and of all of all the projects that I have ever done, Dylan at every stage of his life would agree that that Heroes of Time was the coolest. <laughs> um, I I played Zeke, as as you know, yes, and I I was I was like the fire mage hero man mm -hmm. i was like I, I could have not done anything else acting forever and that would have been the coolest thing <laughs> to this day still the coolest thing um because it was everything that i wanted out of out of a role oh that's Again, awesome thing working working with you and and and, and the rest of the crew was just it, it feels like a vacation every time we're on set mm -hmm. but you know, now we get to move around in this game while we're on set as well. So it was added bonus. Yes. I remember. So, uh, you know, there was a time as part of a series, of, you know, an anthology series, uh, Dead by Midnight Part 2. Um, kill, white to kill, I think, is you know, the, the, the sub thing. But, uh, <laughs> but I remember almost arguing no it's not arguing but i pretty much put my foot down with uh tori and i was like i want dylan in my film i haven't really worked with him because we haven't worked together we've worked together but I, I haven't worked on a personal you know project with you and so i was like i want dylan and i think he had like uh they they had like a role for you somewhere else i can't remember um but yeah i pretty much fought for him but i was like i need him here <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know that. <laughs> Who's this handsome devil? That was a horn hero. <laughs> um. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember. Uh, and you know, obviously, here at the time, we got a lot of the people that I worked with in the past, uh, or, or in the, the the previous film. You know, like Andrew and uh, Emma and Dejour. Uh. And so that was like important to keep that chemistry together, the, that group of people. I love Andrew. Uh, and I think it's, to me, it's, it's a personal 
it's like super fun for me to see you work with Andrew because I think Andrew is insanely talented. Um, he is, yeah, he he is amazing, and he easily outacts and outperforms ninety nine point nine seven. <laughs> everybody else who, who is in a scene with with uh with andrew and that is purely a testament to how seriously and how devoted to the craft of the acting he is yes yes Let's see he looks like someone responsible for getting his entire friend group killed <laughs> that, this is porn hero again i, I comment uh, <laughs> but yeah um like I, I remember when uh so originally I had like a another person in the lead of of the first film, you know, for uh Creepy Dolls. And uh that fell through. So Tori was like, let's get let's get uh, Andrew. And I was like, Andrew? I'm like, are you sure? In the back of my head I was scared. I was like, This I know how, how good he is. And I'm like intimidated by him. <laughs> Which I guess it shouldn't be the mindset, but like you know, I I, I just knew his level was was very yeah, like you said, passionate, really good, you know, because uh, we, we filmed with him on Neon Dead, and, you know, he's like adorable, like, he has like a, I don't even know his regular accent, but it, basically when he puts on his role, he transforms into whatever he is, and he was like a southern lord, I guess, uh, you know, and Neon Dead, and, and his tone, like, he goes from, like, being this, like, really nice person to, like, just transforming into someone you don't want to like he scared me you know because his character is supposed to be intimidating you know a jerk whatever you want to call it um so yeah yeah now it's and he obviously took that role into uh into here at a time when he he created his accent uh yeah yeah, yeah. Now, uh, and it goes back to also i feel like he's saying like having fun he had a lot of fun i feel you know uh but he took it seriously too, like which we all do. Like that's the thing about Monster Buster is we we, we take our craft seriously, but we know how to have fun too. Like Dylan was saying. Yes. Yeah. And and yeah. And everybody knows what they're doing and B knows how to do it. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, like the the taking it seriously part is it is a given. Yes. Yeah. Just everybody is so personable and kind and and everybody just excited to hang out with everybody else and it's yeah it, it it's always a wonderful time mm -hmm. oh absolutely um i remember also um what was i gonna add? like on on heroes of time you know i asked everyone to uh choose like an eye color because we, we gave people contacts because it, when you were making a character in a video game you know, your eyes are going to be different. Your hair is going to be different than what you are in real life. Uh, and uh, you just went all out and you got your hair dyed. You got a haircut. You freaking look awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Yeah, uh, yeah, I had the biggest, purplest mohawk that I have ever had in my entire life. Um, I mean, there's not a lot of purple mohawk competition in my past <laughs> to compare it to but yeah I, I i was very excited that uh that i got to uh you know re like really switch up my my look yeah for a little while so um horn is like yes unfortunately i am an actor who never gets to act uh the actor that always ends the tacky tacky I'm not sure what that means. Do you know what that He's means? Like like Doritos. I have arrived. That's another uh, streamer. Uh, it's quite <laughs> hilarious. Um, so, uh, well, welcome, uh, streamer or horn. If you guys have any questions for uh, Dylan, by all means, shoot away. Uh, he is a uh, indie actor. Pew 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 pew. <laughs> the person that works the stage lights down. Oh, and all the background stuff. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, techie, techie, techie. Okay. That makes sense. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's what I am. Um, so, all right. Uh, so with Heroes of Time, you know, me and you have uh, discussed about making it like a series, you know, just because I felt like there's a lot of potential in Heroes of Time. Uh, basically, that, that, that 
genre mmo people get stuck in video games that happens you know a decent amount if not a lot in animes not too much in movie production uh and i just thought that's like a a field that could be you know dived into and really push the limits on a series like that uh it's like but, underrepresented storylines that uh you know are very fertile soil for <laughs> you know be, and I know that you and I both really appreciate character growth and character development in our series we're watching. <laughs> yes. You're just like, oh. it's not a lot, bro. It's literally every anime. It is, it's true. It is really. <laughs> At least five names. I thought maybe yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, continue my bad. I don't know if you have more to say about it. No, it's like that concept that we did for for the short for Dead by Midnight. Yeah, it was so awesome, and there was so so much to explore there that you know we definitely needed more than the twenty minutes of of, of screen time. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we've been working on on on, on getting. Getting something moving with that, which yes. has been super awesome. Yes, it has. It has. Uh, Horns is like uh, talking about. I'm uneducated on the concept of uh, Itsuke, uh which is pretty much that's what that that genre is called in anime. Uh, I know about Itsuke. Uh I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I'm not used to that term. But I, I, I've heard of the term. All right. Um, so this is pretty much getting into the uh, a close. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else uh, you would want to say before we come to a close. Uh, oh, I just uh, I, I, I want to thank you, Flint, for for uh, for having me on and, uh, you know, chat me up about about the craft and movies and and acting and some of the productions that we've done together this has been this has been an awesome little uh little journey yes no it has and i am just not honored for working with you but looking forward to the projects up ahead because they're oh, oh, without a doubt yeah because yeah, each each project had been better than the last one so i'm very excited to see what the future holds <laughs> Well, again, well, thank you for joining me on uh, uh, the special uh, interview stream. Uh, I kind of want to do this a little bit more often. I want to like Tori on, uh, uh, just because you know Tori. We should have like sixteen people on. Oh, but the hell rules, yeah! Everybody has to talk at the same time. Oh, that sounds brilliant. <laughs> the interview will only last five minutes. Oh, but oh, it will be great. Corinne uh, has a question. Can a cap capybara join the call to ask a question real quick? Uh, yeah. sure. That's fine. The, the, the capybaras. Yeah, you, you know the capybara, technically. Oh, but his name yes. is Horns. Of oh, course Horns. you know me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, my question to you is, what is the favorite thing you've gotten to act in? Ooh. Uh, uh, let me see. All right, so, uh, my favorite movie that I've gotten to to act in ha has probably been uh dead because that was oh what was the name uh, the neon dead oh neon yes yeah, yeah. um it, it, just because that was so much fun and we were you know always around each other and you're hanging out on set with the coolest people that you know for was it like I think it was a month four weeks yeah like, yeah yeah like a, like a solid month yeah um, and oh we budget might have been micro but we were feeling mighty oh yeah that entire month it was it was awesome um so that was probably the best best acting experience that that i've had i actually quit my job just to do that and then got another job right after um <laughs> yeah because i i that, that's how much i was serious about helping Tori, 
So yeah, no, uh, Neon Dodd, not Dodd, Neon Dead is was definitely worth every moment of it for me. Nice. Small book. Now, was that was that the only do any oh. singing roles? <laughs> oh no, I actually yeah. whenever I'm cast in musicals, I exclusively play the part that does not get to sing. Actually, you did sing once. At least I'm pretty sure it was. So this was never aired. No one ever saw it, unfortunately. And it's a shame because it was just freaking awesome. But Greg Garrison made uh a series uh, they're like five to ten minutes, I think, uh, of Inspired shorts by Academy Award winner stuff like Wizard of Oz, Pulp Fiction, and we did a musical in one that I thought like there was a musical episode. Oh, oh yes, um, that was the Wizard of Oz episode. Was it? You probably are right. Uh, oh man, I I completely forgot about exclusive that. content. <laughs> Hot diggity, yeah, yeah, I I. I because you guys had like choreography, the dance, and someone was lifted up in the air. If I'm correct, actually, it may have been even you. <laughs> yeah, because I, being the smallest one in the room means I automatically get voted on to be lifted up, or picked up, or carried, or thrown, or tossed. Yes. Um. Yeah. Actually, I guess I, I did say I haven't worked with you technically uh, before. Uh, here's a time, but that's not true. The Pulp Fiction thing was we worked together. Oh my god, it was so good. I'm actually upset that we haven't got that out because there was some really good stuff in there. I'd have to talk to uh, Garrison and see see what uh what stuff he has left. Yeah, yeah, it would be it it, it would be nice to see. It really would be. Least. Yes. <laughs> um, do you have any other questions, Horns? Hmm. Like that we haven't touched on. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Get get super tricky with it. I will answer all sorts of questions. Oh yeah. What is your favorite line that you had to read for a performance? Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Uh, I almost added that. Good. Yeah, that's good. Um. Uh. So I actually. Uh. In the remake of the movie Footloose, I was in. Hell I yeah. To, I got to ad lib <laughs> lines that actually made it into the final cut of the movie. Um, I, This was like my first major acting gig. Um, I was in college at the time, and I remember I auditioned, and then I met with the casting director for the callback, and they were like, all right, uh, we'll we'll let you know, you know, when when we get close to to filming, and nothing, 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 and then like on a Tuesday, they're like, hey, we need you to come in for costume fitting, uh, because you're gonna be on set this weekend, and I was like, perfect, it it shall be done. But I remember, um, I was working in the uh the drive-in restaurant you know when all the kids are illegally dancing uh, <laughs> and I, I i remember uh i'm supposed to alert wide in the back that reverend is is out front and the reverend does not like all of this all of this dancing um so i remember i i hammed it up a little bit and this is the line and i'm going to see if i can if, if i can enact it faithfully Oh dang! Oh dang! Oh dang! <laughs> yeah, but but that was it. So I got to ad lib, oh dangs, and then I I run to the back and I'm like, hey Clyde, Reverend Moore's outside, man. <laughs> that was it. That was uh, uh, that was, that was my, my my brush with greatness. That is fantastic. Actually, bringing up uh, lines are our particular scene, uh, and here was a time. There's a a scene where. So Dylan's character Zeke, he flirts with um, Emma Green's character because you know they have like a crush on each other, uh, and he like says like some cheesy lines, and then he brings out a fire heart, you know, with his element because he's fire. Uh, and I remember 
this, this is like one of those scenes, you know, just in general where like Dylan just has a lot of fun and is just cracks up uh, the uh, the crew, you know. Uh, and I didn't know how this was going to turn out because we didn't know how how the special effects were going to turn out. So this is purely on, you know, how 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 you move, how you act, uh, and it turned out freaking awesome, obviously, and and uh, with the special effects because you know this is like nine thousand dollars. It's not that big of a budget if you look at it. You know, think about it. Um, and then the, the special effects crew did insane, but a lot of it was relied on how the actors portrayed the elements, and I, I thought that was really cool. Was that the "I can melt your heart"? Yes. I'm, yes. Yeah. I, 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 I still think about that line uh, oh, uh, yeah. to this day. It, that must respond is so good. <laughs> but uh, yes. Now you just got to get all fiery and flirty. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. So, uh, Strimmer has a, a question. Uh, what do you think is the hardest part of acting? Ooh, um, a, to birth the question a little bit, the hardest part of acting is probably auditioning. <laughs> That's true. Um, yes. yes. Oh, my God. You, you will audition, and you will audition... 16 times in a month and you will self-tape and you'll go out to auditions and you'll read and you'll get callbacks and you might not land anything and you might not land anything for months and just keep auditioning because that's that that's all that's all you can do that is what separates the good actors from the bad actors is <laughs> the good actors will take a thousand audition denials and then on that one thousand and first try they will get they will get the part and then and then the rest will be history whereas mm -hmm. the bad actors might audition it gets to audition 263 and they realize that it's it's not for them and and they stop or they slow down or they quit it, it auditioning and being told no or not being told anything at all and just <laughs> existing in the actor ether with everybody else um and oh, man i can't tell you how many times i've gone to in person audition and there are a dozen other people that look pretty much almost exactly like you because they're all going out for the same part mm -hmm. and the casting director needs a short guy with long hair and uh, interesting facial features. Well, there's a whole bunch of weirdos hanging out in this waiting room. We're all auditioning for short guy with long hair and interesting facial features. Mm -hmm. This actually, you bring up something that I forget. So sometimes you could be have an incredible um, uh, uh, rehearsal you know or like they, they watch your your performance and everything's check mark check mark check mark but then something outside of your yourself may not allow you to get that role like in the neon dead a big issue was dylan's a lot shorter than greg and when you frame scenes you know they they had to think about that and so those things could also like throw you off you know you did nothing wrong you know but something outside of you know it, it may may take it away, you know, uh, which I think is interesting. I can't, you know, can't change the fact that I'm, I'm five, four. Yeah. So if you want somebody that's five, eight, I'm, I'm not, not your person. <laughs> now, also a lot of times people don't realize being short is actually a plus in, uh, in film. Yeah. Keeps you in the frame better. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, like if you have a tall, like a six person, it may be just harder getting a role, you know, just the reality of filming. Uh, they got obviously a lot better, you know, than in the past because they have special effects and ways to trick the camera. You know, just, it's just technology is just better. Uh, but I, I do know sometimes that can be a, a tricky thing. I was going to ask, have you ever been hired on as an Mario. understudy? <laughs> oh, um, no, I think in all, all the theater that I've done... I don't think I've ever done a show that has had theater studies, per se. Um, I remember 
I remember not being able to do a show one time, and I kind of threw a, a, a wrench in the works when, you know, I'm on Darling of your pan and and the Lost Boys, and, you know, I'm unable to perform that weekend, so now there's no John Darling. Now it's just Wendy and and, the, and Michael, I guess, is the kid's name. Mm-hmm. Little one with the bear. But <laughs> I've never I, I I've never been in an understudy. I, I, I don't think I've ever done anything professional enough to warrant understudies. I'm actually unfamiliar with this term. What is an understudy? Do you want to explain it or shall I? I'll let, I'll let Dylan. Uh, uh, you, can, you, you can. Okay, an understudy is basically somebody that's hired on to cover a part if the main actor isn't able to make it. Ah, uh, pretty much a stand-in, but more so. Okay. Yeah, they're they're very prevalent in uh, theater shows and Broadway shows. Um, that makes sense. At, yeah, all of your leads will have you know your your main cast and then the the understudy and the understudy might you know on the Thursday night performances yeah so that they can still get their their reps and their time in um you know on stage with the other actors um yes it's, it's kind of a backup that's what a uh, said cool oh well, any other questions uh, from a uh, streamer or Horns before we close this. Hmm. None that I can think of right now. All right. Well, again, thank you, Dylan, for, for participating or for being here. I mean, I, I freaking love you. So, this is... Flint, thank you for, for having me on. I appreciate it. Heck yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll um, like to hopefully do this more often with uh, other guests. Uh, maybe Dylan will come oh, back absolutely. in in time. <laughs> uh, but anyways, all right. Well, anyways, you all have a good night. Thank you very much, and I'll see you later. Bye bye. And hey, night horns, night stream, night flight. Good night. Good night. Good night, Anthony.